Sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! It's not gonna happen if Daniel McMillan, Pennsylvania native, kept your winning here at Pocono. Third win of the season, and will win the championship. Ryan Benjamin with the last lap pass! And he is going to score the victory in the Minute Maid 300. Sam and Austin, third win of the season! He's gonna get it and only leads three laps tonight! Welcome to the NOF SRL. How's it going, everybody? Or should I say howdy is we are down here in the Lone Star State. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to race number 16 of season number one of the NOF SRL Mission Barbecue Cup Series. We are down here at the Texas World Speedway in State College, Texas for the ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum bum bum out of the groove 500 here at the famous Texas World Speedway. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, my name is Trey Wright, and I'll be calling this 40-lap uh, event of this two-mile High Bank sister track to the Michigan International Speedway. Alongside me is Matt Tuck, who is on the call for me at the Michigan International Speedway. Now, Matt, uh, we definitely saw a lot of craziness at the Michigan International Speedway. What are your expectations here coming into a very similar track here at Texas World? Well, obviously, I don't think I don't think you'll ever see what we saw out in mean, Michigan. So I'd expect something like that, and a lot of uh, a lot of crazy racing, a lot of crazy passing. But dialed back a little bit. I don't think these guys have been near as haywire as we saw when we were back at the uh, Michigan International Speedway. Definitely, that was uh, quite the crazy race on the poles. A number nine of Zachary Fitzwater, his first pole of the season, starting alongside him as a number 19 of Juan Rodriguez. And then starting all the way back in the fifth position is your points leader, Landon Smith Jr. And the crazy thing about this is uh, we are definitely seeing a very crazy point situation here. Landon Smith Jr. has 1,980 points. His counterpart, Eric Monaco, only nine points behind. See if we can find Eric Monaco. Uh, there, He's not even here. He is starting all the way back in the 16th row. So another... Uh, poor qualifying effort for that 75 team. Uh, but Eric Monaco, only nine points behind. And then Benjamin Dover in the 56. Eight, uh, 1,875 points. So very large gap between second and third. And then an even larger gap between third and fourth. Tyler Reynolds back there with 1,784. And then uh, Madison Tall rounding out your top five in points with 1,774. So top guys this season definitely showing their might here. Uh, in the Mission Barbecue Cup Series, only one, uh, in fact, uh, one race to go before the All-Star break, as we will have the Coca-Cola 500 on Thursday, um, and then we will have the All-Star race at the Flemington Speedway, but right now, we're going to get set for 40 laps here at the uh, Texas World Speedway, I should say. Got the cars rolling off here, making sure everybody will get off. Eric Hamill a little slow in that 91 for Macklin Hamill Motorsports, but he is getting off all right, making sure everybody is getting off the pit road nice and dandy. Now, Matt Tuck, we saw Eric Monaco come from the back to the front at Michigan. Do you think someone is going to do the same today, or do you think that someone is going to uh, dominate here at the Texas World Speedway? I don't know. Well, obviously, we probably... I'll say from drawing the comparisons on the two races because I don't think you know I think that what happened at Michigan is kind of uh, kind of never to be seen again and and of our history because it was that crazy race but I'm gonna take one of the I'm gonna take one of my own cars and I'm gonna say the 54 Daisy Johnson is gonna finally break through and get the win today no they've been that t 53 my bad but the 53 car is gonna pull the win today been close but no cigar yet and I think this is the race they finally do it. Definitely. I know you've been having a tough season mechanical-wise, and uh, don't really need to give Kayla Rose any introduction all the way back in last points for the 54. So Velocistar Racing definitely looking for a rebound and is trying to see where Kayla Rose is starting. There he is all the way back towards the mid-pack. So a uh, team definitely looking for at least to finish as DNF the last five races, if I'm not mistaken. So 
Have to see what happens here, but Fitzy, the god of NR2003, was the god during qualifying. He's going to lead them down. We're green flag racing here at Texas World. into Carter Ooh. Joey making sure nobody goes ar else goes around Caleb Campbell involved but we got another wreck it's the other father from motorsports car Brady Wilmington involved 15 your Daytona 500 champion of Ryan Benjamin he was also involved in two separate incidents both being triggered by father from motorsports cars Jonathan Logan for that team just been a uh, very struggling start to the season for that Ford camp. A caution flag already on lap number one. Zachary Fitzwater led them back to the stripe. Well, it looks like uh, this might be starting off uh, like Michigan. Hopefully it's not going to be starting off like Michigan, but they were already going two and three wide. Madison Tall took them three wide on the front straightaway. And they were four wide on the back straightaway, so... Definitely a very interesting uh, start to the race here at the Texas World Speedway, if I do say so myself, Matt. Yeah, interesting there. I will say this much. That was a lot of those guys there got very lucky that didn't turn into a bigger wreck. They were given with a location of where that wreck happened. That could have been a lot bigger. The 97's dropping down to pit. I didn't see if he got any damage, so I he can't did. attest as to what. Did he? Oh, he did. He got a little bit there, so no surprise there that he's coming down pit road. Yeah, we see a lot more cars coming down pit road. Ryan Benjamin, Brady Wilmington have been having such a strong run. That's all the cars that are going to come down the pit lane. I don't think anybody's going to get knocked out. Just a couple cars going around towards the middle of the field. But a very uh, early accident to start off the race here at the Texas World Speedway. Zachary Fitzwater is your leader with Bradley Ream, Juan Rodriguez, Madison Tall, and Dave Benjamin Jr. rounding out your top five. Let's see what happened to bring out the first caution here in the Out of the Groove 500. So following along here, four wide on the first lap. Just no room for Tyler Reynolds. Slid up high right into Carter Joey. See Caleb Campbell, Brandon Adele get involved there. And then that looks to be the only bit of it. Just a three or four car incident, but up in here... Actually, no, they're a little bit more ways back. See, these guys are still checking up. I think Mitchell Collins. Oh, Jonathan Logan, team owner of Father Fruit Motorsports, is going to turn right up into the 15 of Ryan Benjamin. And that's going to subsequently turn around his team own, uh, team teammate of Mitchell Collins. So all three Father Fruit Motorsports cars having integral parts in these first few accidents is... You see the 62 of Brady Wilmington with a little bit of damage. Danny DeVito Jr. got a piece. Jonathan Logan driving away like nothing happened. Keegan Thompson got slow. Riley Sampson slowed down a little bit. 94 of Tyler Reynolds relatively clean. But uh, a lot of cars involved. I think the worst damage being to the 51 of Carter Joey, who dominated the Michigan race, sister track to this track. But... Uh, I don't think he's going to be dominating with uh, poor aerodynamics in that 51. We'll get you the real-time replay with Matt Tuck and then get you back to the restart here in the Out of the Groove 500. Just watch them there coming four wide off turn two. Just Reynolds and Carter Joey absolutely clobber each other there, taking a couple guys out. And then I don't know if that 52 just shunted the – is that the 50 car? I don't know. There was just they got a little too bump draft happy going down there into turn three. Maybe somebody checked up, but tough break there for a lot of go those guys. That 50 car, absolutely a Mitchell Collins getting torn up there the most. Father Fruit Motorsports, mm -hmm. awful start to the season, awful start to this race continues. But, uh, a tough one there. We'll say, though, again, a lot of guys there got lucky because that definitely could have been a bigger wreck. That definitely could have been, especially if those guys came back up onto the racing surface. I'm surprised they did not wreck coming back to the stripe. Nathan Smith and Zachary Buchanan making it three wide with someone there. But Zachary Fitzwater, the man, the myth, the legend himself, leading them back to the stripe. Let's see what he can do on the restart here at the Texas World Speedway for the Out of the Groove 500. Welcome back here to the Texas World Speedway, wrapping up our first caution of the day. 
And nobody was knocked out. Ryan Benjamin all the way in the back with a fairly repaired race car. Carter Joey in there. So like you said, Matt Tuck, a lot of people act. Well, somebody's going to get knocked out. Trey Smith in the 38, an internal issue in that American Motorsports Ford. He's definitely been the black sheep of that team. Al Legacy has been uh, the flagship driver for American Motorsports. Tough break for the 38, but Fitzy with a huge restart. A huge jump over Bradley Ream. They're going to go back to three wide. Madison Tall going to be in the sucker hole. Dave Benjamin Jr. Hopefully, he's not going to slide up the racetrack. Contrary, he is not. But Fitzy with a huge jump on these guys going back onto the back straight away. Bradley Ream and Dave Benjamin Jr. in a dogfight for second. Meanwhile, Daniel Voyles found his, has found his way into the top five. And now he's going to subsequently almost fall out of the top five. But Daniel Voyles, after a couple of DNFs in that 26, ever since he won Watkins Glen, he has just been absolutely horrific in the 26, looking for a rebound of a season. And now it's going to be a Velocistar Racing oh. Cannabis thing. Oh, and that's going to take out a couple more cars. Josh Williamson involved. And that is going to take out the field. The back half of the field. Al Legacy, Caleb Campbell, Keegan Thompson. Now that was a team killer for Velocistar Racing. Unfortunately, you had to see that, Matt Tuck. Man, oh man, yeah, we'll Caleb to, Rose. Uh, Matt. We'll have to uh, take a look at that replay. Obviously, somebody definitely ran completely out of their talent there. Oh, I think um, uh, I think that might have been you, Matt Tuck. Uh, two of the SF Premium Motorsports cars destroyed. Danny Vito Sr. with more da Junior with more damage. Keegan Thompson. I think Carter Joy got out of it relatively fine. But another quick yellow here. And I, I fear this is going to end up much like Michigan. Unfortunately, Fitzy once again leading them back. But Caleb Campo going to come down. Josh Williamson ha after a string of decent runs here. I believe he is going to have to unfortunately park it in the 52. Yep, Williamson is done. Rowe is obviously done. Campbell might pull it behind the wall here in the 46. Now they're going to try and repair the damage on that uh, Macklin Hamill Motorsports car. Very team killing accident here. More debris on the racetrack from some of these guys. Now a couple of cars going to come down. I think Colton Yo, he was involved in that. A couple of great runs. Now some damage on that one car. Same with Benjamin Dover. Chaotic start to this uh, out of the groove 500 here, the Texas World Speedway. I expected this to be a little, uh, a lot as racier than Michigan, but uh, not, not as crazy as this. Already two cautions, and now Nathan Stapleton, another internal issue on the 98. Back to back races, something amiss on the 98. He blew a valve at Ricky, and now he is another internal issue on the 98. I don't think. Uh, Actually, it might just could be a tire going down. We saw that with you, Matt Tuck, uh, at the Papyrus Motorsports Park. With something amiss on the 98, he's going to drop back. But another large, violent accident here in the opening stages. Just about a quarter of the way through the Out of the Groove 500. Let's see what happened to bring out the second caution. A violent team-killing accident in Turn 1 here at the Texas World Speedway. I'm sorry you had that, to see that. That's some bullshit. I'm 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 99% sure who ran out of talent. I need to see that. I think that was you. Yeah, but who? Oh no, it was Derek Hamill. No, it did. Derek, Derek Hamill. Hamill. Oh, all right, I'm uh, I'm gonna have to destroy Derek Hamill now. <laughs> oh no. Am I getting the slow mo for this? Yeah, you're. Uh, you. You'll get a slow mo. I'll. I'll I don't know. I'll give. I, I'll give you a slow-mo from one of these guys, but Derek Hamill, my God, what a gangster, unfortunately. All right. So Derek Hamill, owner of Macklin Hamill Motorsports, is going to take, he's going to misjudge it with Daisy Johnson. He's going to try up high, just misjudges it with the 53, and then right down into the 52, her team owner, and the guy who's coincidentally in the booth with me, and then Matt completely just completely runs oh. out of talent there by the 91. I'm not sure if he actually does know how to drive. I guess from oh, that man. instance he doesn't, but takes out a bunch of cars there. You can see, uh, you know, everybody gets torn up and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then just to yeah. stack up here, you see Keegan Thompson 
A lot of guys just involved. Uh, a lot of guys just Arca breaking into this. Al Legacy not going to help him in points. Keegan Thompson, that affected uh, both of the Macklin Hamill Motorsports cars and that junked the entire Velocistar Racing Camp. Real Fan Motorsports had a car knocked out of that as well, but Der Derek Hamill, the meme man here, just took out Mr. Midnight League's cars, all three of his cars, so I don't think Derek Hamill is going to be on Matt Tuck's Christmas list for long. Uh, but just a very unfortunate turn of events here. Very chaotic start here to the Texas World at the Texas World Speedway here. We'll get you the real-time replay with a probably a very angry Matt Tuck narrating that, and we'll get you back to the restart here. So you just watched there the 91 again, just uh, you know, and uh, completely runs out of his talent there and uh, junks a whole bunch. At least gets that, uh, you know, at least his say caused a big one there at Texas World, but uh, a lot of cars torn up and uh, a lot of guys not going to finish the race. But, you know, maybe we'll see what happens. You know, maybe the 91 will, maybe he won't. But interesting up front, obviously, all this uh, chaos. The main who likes that the most is Zachary Fitzwater because the more of this kind of uh, not good racing we see in the back, the more he just can jump every tee off on every restart like we saw he did there. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see here. That number nine Honda for Polestar Motorsports is looking very fast. Yeah, he's You're going to have to see how he plays this out. Yeah, definitely been uh, kind of the black sheep of that team. Uh, Logan Willie, uh, Logan Smith Jr., I should... Uh, Landon Smith Jr., I should say. He has definitely been the flagship driver for Polestar Motorsports. And Fitzy trying to just get his first win of the season. We'll, we'll see what the Aussie can do on the restart here. Uh, another er, Cleaning up after another early wreck here at the Texas World Speedway. We'll, but, uh, when we return, we'll get you to the restart here in the Out of the Groove 500. And we return here to the Texas World Speedway, wrapping up our second caution of the day. And uh, Ryan Durrani, unfortunately, had to blow something, have something go amiss in the uh, 38. He's going to finish last, but then Al Agassi, his teammate, both American Motorsports cars, finishing in the bottom positions. Josh Williamson, Caleb Rose, Matt Tuck, Keegan Thompson, uh, they are all out of the race. Uh, Caleb Campbell is one lap down, but ironically, the least angriest guy in the field so far is the man who started the angry memes in the first place. Zachary Fitzwater leads them back. Another great jump over Bradley Ream in our third, in our second restart, I should say, but they're already going, uh, fanning out here. Madison Tall to the inside of Bradley Ream. Hopefully we can get a couple of uh, green flag laps in. But definitely a lot of the field either damaged or decimated. Nathan Stapleton back on the racing surface. I think he just had a tire going down in the 98, so very good for him. And now these guys are definitely bunching up three wide for third place, coincidentally. Juan Rodriguez, watch out for him. He's going to fall all the way back in that middle line. But Fitzy, clean air definitely matters here at the Texas World Speedway. And uh, Fitzy definitely having the cleanest air, but Madison Tall right on Fitzy's rear bumper. I think we heard somebody going around in the back. No, I did not. Just stop no. me being paranoid. Maybe just knock the wall down. Somebody hit the wall back there. There, three wide in the back. Meanwhile, they're getting really racy up here. There's Derek Hamill, the instigator behind this. I know, Matt, you'd love for him to be penalized or uh, have his butt kicked all the way to kingdom come. But unfortunately, that's not the deal. Now the top three have broken away. You have to go all the way back to the battle for fourth for two wide racing between Dave Benjamin Jr., and the 26 of Daniel Voiles. Uh, what are your uh, thoughts so far on this race, Matt Tuck, even though I you know you're very salty after that lap eight incident that virtually took out your entire team? Well, I mean, honestly, it looks like, I guess, it's not necessarily a surprise given the amount of cars junk, but you can see everyone start. Oh, finally. there goes Dustin oh, Davis. No, oh, Dustin Davis. Oh, Dustin Davis. Oh, no, Dustin Davis. That's three wide there. Sorry to inter interrupt you there. The, I mean, no surprise given the amount of completely trashed race cars. Um, they're starting to fan out, which is always a good thing. So now it's just going to become a matter of no pit stops. I'd imagine there's probably be one stop past halfway, so I don't think pit strategy is going to play too big a factor in here. So now it's just a matter, you know, if you're Fitzy, can you just you know, slap that car in the middle of the racetrack and hold it out there as long as you can he definitely looks fast 
there's no doubt about it he's definitely he's got that clean air you know this is a lot of there's a lot of indy car feel to this track where clean air is very important but we'll just have to see here if that nine can hold off how long that nine can hold up for definitely have to see rapidly closing in on the halfway point madison tall looking for hair second for one of the season in fact uh positions drivers in positions two through four all looking for their second wins of the season and now i believe uh yeah, most of the drivers in the top 10 looking for their second win. Madison Tall won at Boston. Bradley Ream won the second Dodge Monodrome race. Zach, uh, Zachary Davis was your Milwaukee winner. Dave Benjamin Jr. has yet to win a, win a race. Your Watkins Glen winner of Daniel Voyles right there. Juan Rodriguez has yet to win. Uh, Pol Polar Star Motorsports, all their cars in the top 10. And uh, two of their cars have visited Victory Lane. Nathan Smith at Charlotte and your points leader, Landon Smith Jr., uh, having a solid run, he has won twice this season. In fact, your defending winner, then Charlie Davenport, still looking for his first win. Trying to find Eric Monaco all the way in the back. He is in the 21st position as of last lap, so uh, not the run that he wanted. But uh, starting to see a single file train here, closing in on halfway already here in the out of the group 500. Now, Bradley Ream going to the inside of Madison Tall. But that inside on the entrance of turn one and two, definitely not the preferred line. And Fitzy, he's just been dominating this race so far. Yes, he has led them a lot of laps under caution, but it is very real that he could go up, end up, and sweep this win, uh, sweep this race, win the race, lead all the laps, and get the five, the uh, five point bonus for leading the most laps. We saw Landon Smith Jr. do that for his first win at uh, the Nazareth Speedway. There he is, going for a pass on Juan Rodriguez. And now almost three wide for second position. Madison Tall all the way on the high side. That's gonna open the door for Bradley Ream, try and take advantage of Madison Tall going way out of the groove. Uh, yes, gotta plug in our race sponsor there just a little bit there. Yes, I am 100% cringe worthy here, but this, this series is the stupidest one in the NOFSRL, so expect stu stupidity. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we definitely, uh, we've seen a good amount of that here today, but up front, Zachary Fitzwater being the absolute opposite of stupid. Now, the interesting thing to be here, see here, the question is going to be, can you actually make the pass for the lead? Because if you take a look here, if you scroll through the field here, there is about, can't tell for sure, Oh, never mind. Never mind. As I say, that's 76 of... That's Bradley Ream, correct? Yes, Bradley yes. Ream. So as I say, the question of can you make a pass, but pass... Mm. Oh, here oh, they go. Three, three wide. wide. Just about three wide as across the stripe with the cross flags displayed. Dave Benjamin Jr. Don't even think about going four wide there, bud. Zachary Davis is going to think better of that. Those guys being uh, kind of uh, uh, canceling each other out is going to allow Fitzy to pull away just a little bit more. Halfway here through the out of the groove 500 at the Texas World Speedway. Uh, thoughts on this race so far? The first half was uh, definitely one for the memeing ages, Matt Tuck, as we are closing in on lap traffic just a little bit. Yeah, it's been an interesting race. It's gonna be interesting to see here. This is not an easy track to pass as we're seeing. And that clean air, you know, I mean, that's a lot of cars single file here right now. So it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, can you actually make that pass? Yeah, definitely. From second to the lead, we'll see here. Obviously this lap traffic, I don't know how much more lap traffic is up there. It's going to be interesting, too, to see how much this tire wear play no effect in this race. Because, obviously, these guys are gunning it around this racetrack at a pretty good rate of speed. So, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, when that tire drop off, it's how much does actually hit and change the outcome of this race. Definitely is. Fitzy rapidly closing in on the stricken car, the damaged car, I should say, of Caleb Campo there. About uh, 20 car lengths apart from that 46. And then Jake Hoover, your uh, do first Dodge Motodrome race winner. He is ahead of Caleb Campbell, but Fitzy dominating so far, but Madison Tall not far behind him now. What's Fitzy do? He's just going to go to the inside of Campbell. Tall is going to follow suit. Same to the inside of Hoover. 
And then Zachary Davis definitely been uh, more consistent in the last couple of races ever since Milwaukee. They gather around those lap cars with ease. Let's see what Derek Hamill, trying to find Derek Hamill. He is, uh, Derek Hamill is currently rocking the 15th position. So I know that would kind of irk you if uh, Derek Hamill got a top 15 and Jake Hoover is kind of irking the 19 of Juan Rodriguez right now. He is just stuck behind him. I wouldn't be surprised if he dumps that 27 to make it another team killer. As Bradley Ream still trying to make a pass on Madison Tall. But just gets stalled out on the inside. And Tall going to rock it around on that outside lane. Continuing to allow Fitzy to lead. All the guys in the top five now looking for their second wins of the season. Trying to join Keegan Thompson and Landon Smith Jr. as the only drivers to visit uh, Victory Lane multiple times. Body Armor Victory Lane multiple times here in the Mission Barbecue Cup Series. But with 15 laps to go here, Fitzy. It is Fitzy. Bradley Ream. I think he might have a run on tall this time. He's going to have a little bit of help from Zachary Davis. He's gonna get close though. Gonna try and side he's draft getting... her down the street. Well, with, with that said, with that said, even though he can't make the pass, they are closing in on Zachary Fitzwater a bit here. That top four, they've kind of scrunched up here a little bit, and they're definitely getting a lot closer to the bumper of that nine car. Definitely, I wouldn't be surprised if Madison Tall would try and give that that uh, Aussie a little bit of a chrome horn. We got uh, international. We got the international base covered. We've got the uh, gender diversity base covered. We've got the Mopar fan covered. Lots of diversity here in the Mission Barbecue Cup Series. But Zachary Fitzwater, the god of NR2003, is on point here. Bradley Reams still trying to get around Madison Tall, and it is still not working. Ooh, he might have a run on here. They are wheel well to wheel well. He's finally got a bumper over her. I think she's going to have a little bit of help from Zachary Davis. No, Davis moves inside. And Reem got around her that lap. I think Reem definitely has a uh, very powerful Mopar engine now. Tall going to be on the outside lane. and should get shuffled all the way back to the fourth position. A little close call there between her and Zachary Davis. Now, what does Daniel Voiles do? Voiles watching these two battle. Thought about making it three wide there for a second. Meanwhile, a little bit of a two-car breakaway. So closing in on ten laps to go. I don't I don't expect these cars to duck down on the pit road, so I think it's just gonna be a race to the end as we have see three wide for fifth place. Well, I mean, oh, they're getting real. That's a good spread fanning out there in that third to about seventh. The tough thing about the pits is you kind of don't really know. It's this is uh this is one X or two X, I believe. This is on one X, so I don't believe they are going to be coming down the pit lane. I think it'll be, yeah. I don't think at this point they're going to. I mean, obviously, I don't see what the advantage would be at this point, and obviously, for the most part, we're pretty close to the end of this race. Here we now, go. So I don't know it. Oh, Bat here we go. Battle we for go. the race lead. Bradley Ream on the inside of Fitzy. They are almost door to door. Ream's not going to clear Fitzy right there. He's going to fall back in line. And now Madison Tall, the shoe is on the other foot between the battle for Ream and Tall. Tall going to have to get out of the gas just a little bit there. But I think at this point, it's going to come down between Fitzy and Ream to see who's going to be in victory circle here. 10 laps to go here at the Texas World Speedway. Who have you got winning, Matt Tuckers? We got Bradley Ream trying to go back to the inside of Fitzy. This is going to be tough. We saw it took him. It took Bradley Ream a long time to get to second. It's going to be interesting to see here. Can he get a good enough run? His car doesn't seem... He's not getting the runoff one and two he needs to be able to make that pass. And Fitzy seems the strongest down in three and four. So it's going to be interesting here. And if this 40 and if this target car here, Madison Tall starts racing Bradley Ream, I mean, that could spell end of his day for him and Fitzy the W. But we're going to have to see here. It's definitely going to be close, though, to see who's going to win this. Definitely. And now they're, oh, they're going to fan out to three wide for the lead. Almost three wide. Zachary Davis going to fall back. 
if I'm Madison Tall, I don't want to push the envelope too much because you got to think uh, Landon Smith Jr. is rocking the sixth position right now, but the other competition to her in the points, Eric Monaco, all the way back. You've got to go back to the 25th position for Eric Monaco. He is not going to gain at all on that 88 of Landon Smith Jr. But then uh, Benjamin Dover, he was uh, knocked out. Tyler Reynolds knocked out. And then Al Agassi was knocked out. Ryan Benjamin, not knocked out of the race. But a lot of her points competition was kind of uh, knocked out early. So she doesn't, I think uh, she'll gladly take a second place finish if that means she can get a leg up on some of her competition and points. But I know Fitzy still deep in the points in the bottom 20. And a win for this would lock him into the all-star race in Flemington. So I know he would love to do that. But uh, Madison Tall right on the back bumper of Fitzy. Six laps to go here. I think it's going to realistically be between Madison Tall and Zachary Fitzwater. Bradley Ream going to go have the, the 14 of Zachary Davis go to the outside. Davis having a great point today. Same with Dave Benjamin Jr. And Landon Smith Jr. Definitely the most consistent and dominant driver of the season. He has definitely established himself of that title but Zachary Fitzwater coming around actually now it'll be six laps to go that was seven laps to go excuse me so now it is six laps to go here at Texas World the gap between Madison Tall and Fitzy just eight one hundred nine one hundredths of a second between the rear bumper and the front bumper of those two cars Bradley Ream raiding in the wings and now they're gonna catch Caleb Campbell again that could play into it, Matt Tuck. Yeah, I mean, these lap cars, for the most part, these guys have caught the lap cars at really good times. So it's going to be interesting here. Now, that could be it. Now, Ooh, this that's... The 46 is not a problem. That swarm up and Oh, that's going to be a problem for Fitzy. But for Madison Dahl, here comes Bradley Ream trying to get there. That's going to kill Madison Tall to the lead. Fitzy way wide. Oh, Bradley oh, Ream, is he going to have the bumper? He's not going to have the bumper. No. He's going to barely fall back in line behind Fitzy. But now they're going to catch Tyler Reynolds, Benjamin Dover, and Daisy Johnson. Oh, man, Fitzy got held up. And Madison Tall really got held up. She's fallen all the way outside the top five. Very unfortunate for her. But now that with... nine car, though. That, I mean, that nine car, though, to slide it up that high off of turn number two and still maintain the lead. I mean, he clearly, he's going to be tough to beat here, but lap cars is not going to, is going to play into the outcome of this race. They're going to catch them, I think, going into turn one next time by. So this could get really dicey here. Definitely is. If they catch them in the turn, I think the upper hand is going to go one of these guys. I think Zachary Davis could have the biggest chance if both of these guys get held up. But Fitzy, they're going to catch them in turn one. First on the chopping block is a 27 of Jake Hoover, your first winner at the Dodge Motodrome. Fitzy, they're going to catch him in one and two. Three laps to go here from the Texas World Speedway. They're going to catch... 27 on the back stretch. I think they'll just move down to the inside. Well, hopefully. We'll see here. Yep, they are. Ooh, Hoover trying. I don't think he's going to fall in line. That's going to hold up Bradley Ream just a little bit. I don't think that's going to hold up anyone majorly, but two laps to go. Popsicle sticks in the air for Zachary Fitzwater looking for his first win. Jake Hoover almost making contact with the 88, but they still got to get around this trio of lap cars. Fitzy is pounded on the back door of Tyler Reynolds. On to the back straightaway for the second to final time. This is, this is going to get interesting. I think he's going to get around Tyler Reynolds, but I think Dover... He's going to shut the door. Bradley Ream going to go a little bit wide here. Oh, he's going to need a huge run. That 94 dumping a ton of air on the 9. But one lap to go. White flag in the air for Zachary Fitzwater. Two miles to go for the Aussie. Going to get held up just a little bit here by the 53 of Daisy Johnson. I think he's going to be, gets around this 53 car, though. I think he's clear sailing as long as he hits three and four. 
I think he is. Bradley Ream has one more shot. He's gonna he's gonna get held up just a little bit, get out of the gas. That's gonna do it. The man, the myth, the legend, Zachary Fitzwater, first one of the season, he wins at Texas World. In dominating and fashion, Zachary and Fitzwater gets it done. Lap. And he did what his teammate did back in Nazareth Fitzy, leading every single lap. And will get the five point bonus for leading the most laps on top of the 190 points he gets for the win. I believe Bradley Ream. I think he fell all the way back to third, possibly. Take a look. No, second. Zachary Davis, third. Logan Williams up to fourth. Dave Benjamin Jr., fifth. Nathan Smith, sixth. Madison Tall fell all the way back to seventh. Eighth is Landon Smith Jr., top, uh, top tens for all three of the Polar Star Motorsports cars. Uh, great day for them. Ninth is Cole Sampson, and tenth is Charlie Davenport. By far his best finish of the year. Take a look to see what happened to all these guys. Keegan Thompson. Matt Tuck, uh, unfortunately, another mechanical issue for you, even though you were involved in that accident. Caleb Rose, Josh Williamson, Al Legacy, all involved in that uh, very, in the big one on lap eight. And then Trey Smith broke a gearbox right before that melee in turns three, uh, one and two. Daisy Johnson, Benjamin Dover, Tyler Reynolds, Jay Cooper, and Caleb Campo all off the lead lap. 29 cars finish on the lead lap. Final thoughts on this race, Matt Tuck. I know, uh, I know for you, that's uh, you're kind of salty about uh, all of your cars finishing outside of the top 25. In fact, outside the top 30. No, Daisy Johnson barely got in the top 30. But final thoughts on this race overall. Zachary Fitzwater adds another cap. Uh, adds another feather into his cap of NR2003 wins. Yeah, it was an impressive drive by that nine car. Obviously, it looks like he was. It looks like he almost choked it away there late in the going there when he just slid a little bit wide coming off of that corner but to be able to hold on to that um you know to be able to hold on to that is impressive you know he was able to sit gather that car right back up and get back going there and was able to just power it off hold off Raymond you know he was uh you know it's definitely the Texas world is a tough track to pass but either way regardless even on track stuff to pass you know leading an entire race is definitely something to uh, well, that's an impressive feat there. So he definitely earned that win here today. He definitely did. Bradley Ream, oh so close. He was uh, in a battle position there with Madison Tall for the majority of the second half of the race. But Zachary Fitzwater, definitely the least angriest guy exiting Texas World, which is funny enough because he's the one who started the angry trend over on the NOFSRL server. But uh, from here, uh, we're uh, just closing up shop here, just about here at the Texas World Speedway. Next race will be on th this Thursday for our fifth Super Speedway of the series. And so far, if I'm not mistaken, the Coca-Cola 500 at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. Another prime time NOFSRO race. Going to be at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, so definitely going to be very very fun race at that three mile super speedway actually yeah that's actually no that's down in concord north carolina if i'm not mistaken so uh definitely going to be a very fun race actually another thing i should mention that will be our only super speedway race without restrictor plates so that is going to be a melee race expecting a lot of cars to uh a lot of team uh, teams to invest in the coca-cola cars because those cars are going to be flying around 240 miles an hour it's going to get wild but back uh just closing up shop here at the texas world speedway zachary fitzwater is your winner here at the out of the groove 500 your points will be coming up momentarily but on behalf of matt tuck good morning good afternoon and good night ladies and gentlemen from the texas world speedway i have been trey Wright or nascar nerd 34 and i am signing off <laughs>